Hi, it's Wednesday, it's three o'clock. Welcome to Together Unlocked, brought to you as always by Together 2012. We're a disabled-led arts organisation based in the Paralympic host borough of Newham, and we're carrying forward a Paralympic cultural legacy at the moment with this Join In From Home programme, which we are running nationally from our website, www.together2012.org.uk. I'm Ju Gosling, also known as the artist Ju90. I'm here in my East London studio today with Julie Newman, our chair. And before we get on to some audio description, though, we will go to the other long, other end of our long virtual wheeled sofa for some introductions and audio description from the West Midlands. So hi, I uh, yeah, here we are in Sutton Coalfield in the West Midlands. I am Robin Sergina. I am business director at Together 2012 um and a co-host of together unlocked uh just so as you know today um the weather is actually quite nice at the moment up here in sutton coalfield it can't it keeps changing its mind um but i have remembered to shut the blinds today because on monday <laughs> if anyone was watching i apologize that we suddenly got whited out having it been raining it was very strange anyway enough of that so today i am sporting nice clean um parted properly kind of goldy silvery hair I'm, I'm taking on julie's uh descriptions now um no rimmed black armed glasses i am cleanly shaven which is very good and again from monday as some of you know joshua has moved back to the family home and i've started reacquiring my clothes so i am wearing a burgundy um polo shirt which i forgotten i owned I'm not sure how I managed to have a lot of your clothes because we're <laughs> we're not the same size. So there's not really, there's not a lot of overlap other than socks. But I was kind of when I was unpacking a lot of my things, I was like, "This is yours. This is yours." So when, <laughs> so when you left university, left for university six years ago, your baggy was in perhaps. But I know Robin <laughs> said you had the most extraordinary amount of clothes that he'd ever seen when he was packing up at the weekend. So that explains it. That was yours as well. Do you think, guys, you could just tip your camera for us so we saw a bit more of you and a bit less of the ceiling? Brilliant. That's just slipped again, I think, when we were going live. So, Josh, moving on to you. Who are you? What do you look like? Uh, so, yeah, I'm uh, Josh Sergeant. I'm also one of the hosts of Together TV and I'm a doctoral research student. Um, I have kind of messy, uh, swept over blonde hair, uh, not very cleanly shaven. Actually, I need to say cleanly shaven, which would have just been a complete lie. Um, <laughs> and I am wearing a uh, dark blue, um, it's a Team GB uh, kind of Olympic replica hoodie. It says Great Britain on one sleeve and then it has a kind of cool lion union flag uh on the other one um and yeah this is a, a replica from the 2016 no yeah 2016 olympic um athletes jacket fantastic and as always you're going to be introducing a virtual gaming and sports spot later that will be coming up after 3 30. i'm Ju gosling also artistic director of together 2012 I have, well, I would say I have a short red tenored Corona crop, but it's covered up with a hat at the moment. Say no more. I just decided spending two hours to give myself a bad haircut was a bit pointless. So I did it in 10 minutes. And in retrospect, maybe I should have given it half an hour. But still, I have a lovely light grey stylish baseball cap black plastic framed glasses i have black wrist braces silver jewelry and today i'm wearing a short sorry i think the cat is just trying to do something to the computer but it all seems to have calmed down again <laughs> now and um, it's got a logo on for broadstairs folk festival i know the summer is officially at an end or at least according to some people but it feels very summery down here in east london too so we're going to just carry on enjoying the good weather how about you julie what do you look like uh the term hedge and backwards springs to mind i think <clears throat> for me today <laughs> my hair is uh, at that impossible length where there's nothing to do with it excuse me a second <clears throat> excuse me uh so it's sort of like it's a bit all over the place uh juice is getting shorter mine is getting longer uh i have uh, 
actually silver and gold here today um, as a concession rather than gold and silver. I have dark rim glasses. Uh, I have a navy blue polo shirt with little white anchors all over it. I'm wearing a not quite smart watch, but pseudo smart watch, and my little bracelet with the the two um, wolfy heads on it. Which was a very popular birthday present, apparently. So behind us in East London, we have a graffiti banner that says Together 2012. And it's got images of it of all the different activities that we deliver around the year. Drama, dance, photography, filmmaking, carnival arts, street arts, poetry, and much, much more. In more usual times, we deliver a clubs programme every weekday morning in East Ham. It's free for disabled people and anybody they want to bring with them. We've relaunched our poetry club as a phone-based group. So very soon, we're going to be moving on and talking about how that went this morning and sharing some poems. Also coming up, 3.15, we have our new regular app date spot. We're going to be talking about photography apps as well as how the NHS COVID-19 app pilot trial is going here in Newham. We have Nature Watch coming up after that. And of course, it's Wednesday. It's our Clockwork Paralympics. So the final person to audio describe and introduce is the teddy bear behind us. He will be taking part in our Clockwork Paralympics some point after the app date. And his name is Fred. We'll come back to the other teddy bear introduction later as it's not visible at the moment. So it doesn't need audio describing. So how did pop-up poetry go this morning, Julie? It was good. Uh, you know, more people are joining, um, which has challenges in its own right, because it obviously means we have to be very disciplined and listening to each other very carefully. Um, and I think people generally are. You know, it's the same very good natured, very positive uh, group of uh, people. You know, I, I think it was nice to be able to welcome Dawn and Crystal, um, who have had real problems with their landline technology. So, you know, sort of, uh, yay, hooray. It was really lovely. And, and I think, you know, they were excited and pleased to be part of the group as well. Brilliant. So for anybody who's joining us for the first time or the first time on a Wednesday, the way the Pop-Up Poetry Club now works is we have a phone-based system and our wonderful engagement support worker, Noel, you know, we're doing a job that I think must be quite challenging to say the least, individually phones everybody and adds them to the group call, which means by half 10, we can pretty much replicate in our own homes what would happen at the pop-up poetry club, which we would all be sitting down with a cup of tea or coffee and a biscuit, sharing poems that we've found elsewhere, other people's poems, maybe one of our own. And then we all write together on a particular theme. And the way that works, Julie, doesn't it, with the phone group, no rings off so people can write and then calls everybody back and they share their poems. You have a theme each week. What was the theme for today? It was very challenging. It was um, colour and texture. Um, and really, I think only one person was able to completely fulfil that 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 ask um, and did a, a brilliant poem. The rest of us sort of found our way around it in our own individual styles. <clears throat> and I think the results were fantastic, actually. And we're going to hear some of those poems in a minute. I think it's the way it's been adapted and it's had to be adapted for the phone group, really, isn't it? We didn't used to have a theme in advance, although who's to say maybe we'll do that permanently from now on. But at the moment, people have the opportunity to work on a poem all week as well as to write within the group. So they might write on the theme beforehand and write something different in the group or vice versa. Indeed. What's the theme for next week if anybody wants to join in from home? It's a memorable journey, um, and Alison explained it as it could be a, a holiday trip, um, it could be the uh, first day of school, um, it could be uh, a journey that you make, well, basically a journey is going from one place to another, isn't it? But when she's suggesting it's memorable, it's something that stands out in our memories, it's something that we remember 
you know, either with with loathing or, um, you know, or excitement. Or, of course, it could be entirely imaginary. It doesn't have to be a journey that you've taken in real life. Alison Marchant is an international installation artist. And luckily for us, our club's programme manager, she leads our clubs three days a week. Although that's in, as we say, peacetime. I think at the moment everybody is working every hour they can, which is brilliant. We really appreciate it. So would you like to start, or can I ask you to start with your own poem, Julie? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Sorry, I'd got Alison's first. Let me just bring mine up. Um, I, I just really struggled with this. Um, and uh, I talked it through with Alison as well. I should have not, I should have been able to deal with it a lot better. Uh, but this is, uh, in desperation, I attached the cat's blanket to a poem. Uh, and the blanket itself is quite sweet. It's uh, one of those crocheted things that's been linked together uh, as a fundraiser for um, cat rescue in Good Maze. So it's got a special value. So the cat's blanket. Sitting at the foot of the bed, the blanket lies blue and pink, waiting for the next cat to rest and think about the last meal as she lays her head and curls her dear little kitten paws, relaxed in sleep, no sign of claws. The blanket is soft, made with love, a song in each square of wool, each corner tucked in, no threads to pull, held firmly in its place, and seen from above, it's a patchwork of colour, tidy and neat, a place to rest, a place to sleep. But then comes the naughty boy, full of fluff and fury, as the slumbering cat, eyes firmly shut, awakes with a cry that gives voice to outrage and shows that to annoy her sleep will be met with claws and pain. The tufts fly as they tangle again and again. The bundles of fur roll round and around until falling off the bed, grey and black, up and down until the beaten one runs away the other pausing to stretch as he lays on the ground, triumphant, then swaggers back onto the bed, sits on the blanket, stretches his paws and washes his head. That was lovely, <laughs> Judy. Thank you. We've got various cats lurking in our studio. We have cats and dogs with all of our regular presenters. In fact, to the extent that if you go to our sub-menu on the website under Together Unlocked TV, you will find a whole page about the animals that you will see lurking in different parts. So I'm going to read one of Dawn Barber's poems next, and um, this is called Yellow. The colour yellow is my sunflower, soft and velvet. Leaves furry and a bit rough, it hangs over like it's ready to sleep. It has a thorny middle with some yellow with small holes. It's ready to suck you in beauty even the bees and butterflies, for now and evermore. So that was lovely. Thank you, Dawn. And um, and as you were saying, Dawn's one of the people who joins in with Just a Landline, and that's one of the reasons we have a phone-based group, because, of course, so many people still don't have internet access. Although I have to say, if anybody has a smart TV, do tell your friends they can also watch us on YouTube without being able to have to go directly through a computer or a device. So, Robin, you have one for us from Duncan Bridgestock, don't you? I do. I do. And I have to say that, Julie, you mustn't tell us that you're struggling and then come out with a poem as good as <laughs> what you've just done, because it makes the rest of us feel wholly inadequate. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Okay, so this is from Duncan. A world without colour. What could be duller? And you don't have to be a saint to paint. And remember, paint ain't quaint. It's now. Your brush can sing like a thrush. And your easel can go pop, goes the weasel. Who is this hue? Hue this and hue that. Who is this hue cat? Is he the lout we hear so much about? The riot of colour will have to be all quiet on the Western Front. That's brilliant. I love Duncan's poems, and until we get Duncan on to read them for himself, I love the way you read them. Thank so, you. do you have one from Alison Marchant? Absolutely. Now, Alison wanted me to say that 
what she did was she had a book of poetry and Alison has a very interesting technique with words. She selects words and chooses them and rearranges them um, from other people. And this is what she's done and come up with, I think, a really excellent um, poem. It's called Landscape Photograph in Colour. <clears throat> Dark shadows smudge their faded impossible colours in a dawn of cornflowers. Yellow drifts under silken clouds, the air pure white and fast moving. Buds unfold pink and crimson roses, reefs of violets, amber buttercups in clumps of gold, fields of lavender and mustard. Almost transparent, fragile dandelion clocks, wind scattered, flame red and orange colored trees, bushy and leafy and rain drenched. Birch trees shed their aluminum crust on the edge of a red earth ploughed field, a shiny green gold dragonfly in the blue flamed sky. Blue black swallows haunt the glittering grey blue river from the sunshine flame of a midsummer night, day rather, into the blue darkness of a ghost grey fall of night. And again, I really enjoyed that. All of the poems that we've read, read out on the show and any pictures we're going to show, any videos, you will be able to find afterwards on our highlights and links page. This show remains online. We republish it as a recording with enhanced audio and with the proper captions on. If you're watching on YouTube and you want to watch with captions, then you can watch from our website where the captions are being streamed below now. So the highlights and links page is under the main Together Unlocked TV menu. So finally, this is another one from Dawn, and this is called Policeman Benji. Benji the policeman patrols the streets. He makes people feel safe to sleep. Any crime or robbery, he's straight on the job. A big growl, then he blows his whistle, chasing them everywhere they go. Once he catches them, the handcuffs go on. There are a lot of nasty people out there he has to deal with. But he's tough and strong and on the ball, ready to catch them all. Proud of his uniform, his head held high. He's soft and curly with lovely eyes. But no one messes with Benji as he patrols the crime. I'm not quite sure I recognise that, but I think it's a very sweet poem. Julie's 19-year-old nephew joined the Metropolitan Police last autumn you know, and we're very proud of the fact that as a young person, he's been out on the streets helping to keep them safe in times of COVID. And I'm sure Josh will agree with me that all of the criticism of young people has been a little bit much over the last week or so. If, you know, of course, not everybody is obeying lockdown and different rules. But as we know, lots of politicians don't and lots of advisors don't. So we can't really expect young people or indeed sports people to behave differently. I think an increasing number of young people, of course, are just catching the virus at work. But that was a very sweet poem. So just again, remind us, Julie, the theme for next week. A memorable journey. And if anybody wants to join the group by phone, is there still space? As far as I'm aware, yes, but certainly contact Noel um, at together Twenty Twelve. Dot org dot uk. Yes, I'll just put up our address up. It you can send it to info at together twenty twelve dot org dot uk. Any correspondence or TV at together twenty twelve dot org dot uk, and we will just pass that on. So now it's time for update. Dreadful pun. Apologies. Well, I for say this with apprehension. <laughs> What's app doc? Thank you. That was all I was waiting for. I think the delays are appalling sometimes, but it really <laughs> appeals to me. If you have any app jokes or puns, we would love to hear from them. But in the meantime, this is a new feature. At the moment, we have an app date at around 3.15 on every show. That's Monday, Wednesday and Friday, 3 to 4 p.m. But we're going to be continuing our app date weekly indefinitely because apps are so integral to so many different types of art. 
Um, before we get Julie to start talking a bit more about how she's been using a photography app that J Josh recommended on a previous show, we've just been discussing among ourselves while we were waiting to go on air the new laws that were announced again late last night and I believe come into force on Monday. Is that right? Around gatherings of six people. So we're not quite sure what that means for the arts, but what we do think is that if you're, yes, if you're organised and regulated, you're a proper business, then it shouldn't impact. But if, for example, you're not, you know, say you were running an art group and socially distancing, but it's not part of an established education body, it's not being run by a council, I think the chances are you would have to limit it to six people from now on. I mean, that was just one example we were thinking about if people were painting in the park in a socially distanced group. That should be fine, but because it's not being regulated, it's not part of Ofsted, if it's not part of CQC, we think sadly those things are going to go by the wayside. We're trying to get some clarity on it and... Um, and I think that seems to be a little bit difficult. But one of the other things that I think was made clear today, I think it was one of the cabinet ministers doing a media interview, is that giving your contact details when you go into what they call a hospitality venue is now going to become compulsory. It has become advisable, but not part of British law. So lots of pubs and restaurants have been doing it and cinemas and things, but some haven't. That links in very nicely to the NHS COVID-19 app because as we've discussed and, you know, we will continue to show our WhatsApp auntie films, but do look at those on the website as well for more information about how the app works. What you should be able to do is scan a poster when you go into a venue and that should, if the app is given status as a medical device, which is a kind of technical legal thing, that should enable people not to have to hand over personal information. But one of the other is going to be completely compulsory from now on. You know, if you want to go to the pub, the restaurant, I mean, between so many people don't drink, I don't know why they keep talking about pubs, but should you wish to go even to a cafe, you will have to either give your details or scan a code. So I think that's another really good reason to use the app. What do you think, Julie? I think definitely it's a very useful app if, if, if you're in an area where it's where it's working because it, it just cuts down a lot of the interpersonal interaction. You know, you just hold your smartphone up and scan a, um, a little what's it? What do you call those little things? QR code. Thank you. So you scan as, as if I didn't know. I do know, but I just forgot. I only knew recently. Uh, but you scan the QR code and um, the phone does the rest of the work. Yeah, and I think if you've got impaired speech, if you just don't really want to be speaking through a mask, you certainly don't want to be touching somebody else's pen, it's definitely going to be the most hygienic way mm. of coming into a venue. Like I say, the app has to get approval as a legally recognised medical device first. So even when the app first is released, if it hasn't reached that status yet, you would still have to fill details in. But yes, I think it's going to make a huge difference. And it's necessary, of course, because of the way people have been behaving. And, you know, probably it's the venues that haven't been keeping contact details, which are the venues that test and trace teams are discovering were the causes of the problems. Because I think we were discussing as well before it started, the outbreaks seem to be coming from people's homes and large gatherings outside. And that's why it's a ban on gatherings rather than sort of because people say, oh, well, we could go to the pub and there's loads of us. And you say, well, Yes, but if it's a properly regulated hospitality venue, the infection control is such as it's not necessary. And you were saying as an elite swimming coach, Robin, that these gathering things are not going to impact on anybody who's regulated in the way that you're regulated by Swim England. That's right, isn't it? Um, well, as far as I know, and, and stuff that we read this morning from Swim England is that at the moment it doesn't impact because we are already running extremely tight protocols um, you know, temperatures on arrival, um, ev ev you know, because they're closed sessions as such, everybody is already, you know, registered, signed a whole raft of consent forms around behaviour. And um, as of Monday, we had, we, we issued further guidance that if any 
swimmer um, is a, is isolated from their normal day activity, i.e., school for most of them um, and your college then they also can't swim. So it's kind of, you know, you can't be isolated from one place and not somewhere else. Um, and and I think we're going to have to just just wait and see and, and keep doing our best to to make sure that, you know, we are we are being safe. I think one of the questions I've got um, is that will with this kind of um, ramping up of, of the 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 uh, compulsory nature of of either using the app or writing down, you know, or, or providing your details, um, which, which I, nobody should have a problem with. Um, but is, is will venues or places of work or whatever be obliged to provide assistance to someone who writing their personal details down isn't the easiest thing to do? Yeah, absolutely. The Equality Act 2010 requires all service providers to make what's described as reasonable adjustments. And very clearly, it is reasonable. One of the advantages Together 2012 has of taking part in this app pilot is we're able to feed directly back to the NHS who have an extraordinarily able leader in terms of equalities Amina Vora and Amina has been very very helpful in feeding back to us as well so I know Amina is taking these things on board and indeed you and Josh have already made some very helpful suggestions I think it would be naive to think it's going to run everything smoothly at the beginning because we're all implementing a brand new system. But I think what you were saying about Swim England really brought up something I wanted to stress. If we follow the guidance, we can do things safely. Yeah. And that's the difference. You know, properly regulated things are taking place without a problem. And if a, somebody's becoming infected who might well have become infected somewhere else, the system is working. You know, if we all cooperate and make it work, the problem is when it isn't. And um, the government are launching a campaign today, which I find really hard as somebody with a phasia and short term memory problems to say, but it's face, no, hands, face, space, wash your hands, cover your face, create enough space from other people. And if you just do those three simple things, it, it is going to make a huge difference. But moving on to arts apps, because apart from anything else, people don't want to learn how to download an app just to be able to install the COVID-19 app. <laughs> What's the name of the app that you've been playing with that Josh recommended on a previous show? Photoshop Camera. Photoshop Camera. So I'm going to put these onto solo because I didn't realise till I looked at a recording recently that all of the pictures we were seeing on screen the right way up were going out sideways when they went onto YouTube, which is... Oh, right. Okay. Brilliant. So I'm not going to risk sharing the screen. So this is a photo of a cat who's not a million miles away at the moment. And she's absolutely desperate to get on screen. So this is Jinx, and I'm just going to solo it so it stays the right way up. So when did you take this photo, Julie? Um, yesterday. Yesterday. So we'll take this solo off and it looks hide. looks like you've stolen our cat. <laughs> they're very and, similar aren't they yeah and this is what the photo looks like with photoshop camera so what did you use on this julie it's a lens called artful artful a-r-t-f-u-l and we're just going to have a look at another example also catish because it's just so convenient because we, they seem to be everywhere so this is an, a photograph, and I should have di audio described the first one. So the first cat was a tabby cat curled up, almost asleep. This is a blue and cream tabby with a little bit of a purpley pink collar showing. She's curled up on one of those crochet blankets, which has got a grey background with bright pink and turquoise. And now if I take that one off. This is what Julie has done with the app. So now the whole of the cat is bright turquoise. The background is orange with sort of, are they red spirals going through it as well, Julie? Yeah. Almost like candy striping. Orange and red spirals, yeah. And as with the tabby, what it's done to the fur is, how would you describe it? Almost plasticated it. 
I think it's Tufty. But she is your cat, so you've, <laughs> you've got a right to describe her as ever you, however you want. Well, I know I was actually trying to describe the um, the photograph with the filter, not the actual cat itself. Yeah, it's, you know, it's almost like you know that colour and um, that like a, a green that that brass or copper go when when they're weathered. So when they get oxidised, it's that almost greeny mm -hmm. dust colour, which doesn't help you if you can't see. Um, uh, but it's a sort of green with almost a gray in it yes i mean beyond that because with the first picture what seemed to happen is the cat was you know the sort of format of the picture was changed but in the second one you'd also got this kind of spiral going through it were they two different filters yes this one was pop art the last and, one um, and are you able to choose the color scheme within the filter well, it seems that you can, but I'm Josh. You're the the expert on this, so I'm going to look to you for guidance. I started to play around with different values, but I had to work a little bit hard to find them. Um, it's in the edit because uh, I didn't take these photographs with with um, with those lenses. I imported two photographs and then played with them uh, within the the app itself. But there seems to be values attached to the the various colors and saturation and the hues and things like that. Um, so, I mean, how have you found it, Josh? Um, in, so for, for the pop art one, for example, um, I haven't tried to change kind of the colors that, that it gives you through each lens. There's kind of, there is lots of, so the lens is pop art and then within that there's kind of five options i guess or kind of different yeah, yeah. filters that's... that do different things and um, i know you can manipulate them, them because there's ones that have kind of objects and things and you can kind of change the scale of the pretend objects and um, i haven't mm -hmm. tried changing the colors of them I think it's not surprising because Photoshop proper is the industry standard. And I think the great advantage of all of these filters, whether you use them on something like Instagram or through through an app, is you don't have to know how to manipulate. No. You know, I mean, I've done all sorts of masterclasses and courses in how to use Photoshop and how to create those kind of effects. But here you can just press a button. And OK, it's a bit more of a limited palette. But I think particularly if you've got restricted mobility or you don't know how to use apps, it's a wonderful way of being really creative. What I'm hoping I might get from one of you two for a app date in the next week is some kind of screen recording where you show us exactly how you do it. But with that, I'm going to move us on to our virtual nature watch. On a Wednesday, we take a look at the outside world, particularly for the benefit of people like your hosts, because we're all in the shielding groups and still only going out if it's absolutely essential. But our dogs go out. And um, I'm delighted to say for the third week running, we have a contribution from Stara Plurge's assistance dog, Merlo. Stara is often on our screens both as a member of act up newham our associate drama company and also demonstrating inclusive accessible arts activities she very fortunately after months and months and months of being locked down in a flat with no access to a garden is currently up in norfolk with merlot so merlot has sent us this film We've also discussed on Mondays when we talk about photography and film, this phenomenon of slow television. And we think this is probably pretty much as close as we get to slow television. So what we can see here is the back of Merlot's head because he's wearing a camera on a harness. And Merlot is a black Labrador retriever. He's an autism support dog. He's got the loveliest nature and he's appeared very often in films we've shown with ACT UP because he's happened to be in the room. He's trudging through what I'm told is a potato field. They appear to be on a path, not going straight through the potatoes. But there's a lovely kind of open Norfolk sky. You can see lots and lots of blue sky, clouds moving across. 
the green really tells you it's the end of summer. I always um, love the colours, particularly in May and June, where you've got a really vibrant green. So this green is beginning to go a bit brown, but it's certainly an awful lot greener than it is in Canning Town. So Merlot's just turned around to Hannah from Act Up Newham, who's with Stara and Stara and had a treat. And now off he goes again. I'm not sure who's taking who for a walk, but I strongly suspect that Merlot is doing most of the leadership. I don't know enough about potatoes, but I'm assuming as he's in a potato field that a lot of the green sprouting things that are coming up are indeed potatoes. But I'm going to ask Julie, the gardener. <laughs> well, I used to have a, a small holding. So my experience of potatoes in a field like this is that they're ready to be lifted. Um, the flowers have come and gone and the potatoes are growing in the roots. So they need lifting carefully with a fork or a special device pulled by a tractor. But uh, hopefully, Stera, Merlot and Hannah will have some fresh potatoes on their, on their supper table as well. Yes, I can imagine that. Yeah, dear, dear little Merlo's just had another treat and he's sort of moving on. I mean, I went to university. I lived in Norfolk for about four years and um, this seems like very typical landscape. It's pretty much come to an end now. So we'll take that off again. Thank you so much again, Stera and Merlo and yeah. Hannah. Keep those coming. And if you're interested in sending us your artwork, your poems or your films, I've just put the information up on the bottom of the screen again. Send them to info or TV at together2012.org.uk. I think now it's time to tell you a little bit more about our Join In From Home programme and in particular how you can join in from home to write poems and have them published in our new anthology. So I'm just going to take this off the bottom of the screen again once it's run through. Together 2012 is running a Join In From Home programme from our website together2012.org.uk. Click on the link at the top of the page, Join In From Home, to go straight to the main page where you have a wide range of accessible, inclusive, creative activities, mostly using things that you would already have at home. At the top of the page and throughout the pages, you will also see videos in British Sign Language to translate the site for deaf people. These videos can also be useful if you have difficulties reading and you simply want to hear more of the content. The Join In From Home programme is based on the activities that we would usually be running in East London. All of our activities can be enjoyed by families at home, but we also have some of our favourite activities here from our family activity days, which we usually hold in the school holidays. Card making with pens, stickers and paper is also popular. You can show someone you're thinking of them by making them a special card, and if it can't be delivered safely, then send, it with a send a photograph with a personal message or keep it till later. Here we have instructions for making a sock puppet, a storage jar or night light or a lunchbox or storage box, all of which are really popular with our family activity days. And you can click on each of these links to get full instructions. So with the sock puppet, for example, you have lots of instructions with photographs to show you exactly what to do. Same with the storage jar. And same with the lunchbox or storage box. And you can see how effective it is just to use very, very simple techniques. Everyone is completely unique. The Pop-Up Poetry Club meets on a Wednesday morning. We also run regular poetry projects and poetry cafes. We're inviting you to write or sign a poem on the theme of Together and send it to us to share on social media. We're also going to be publishing an anthology of the Together poems in November and everybody who contributes will get a copy of the physical book. 
So now it is time for this week's Clockwork Paralympics. I'm looking over in Birmingham and wondering for <laughs> probably the umpteenth time, because we've done about 60, 70 shows by now, what the definition of a teddy bear is. Our Clockwork Paralympics also celebrate the virtual teddy bear hunt. Um, that to me requires teddy bears, but not always if you're in the West Midlands. Our teddy bear is a traditional teddy bear. <laughs> Um, a bit grubby, but um, I called him Fred, but he's not really Fred Bear. He just needs a little bit of a wash, but he's a sort of dirty orange. And I would say sitting down about 30 centimetres high. So who exactly is competing for Birmingham 2022? So this is Tom. This was the mascot from the Rio Olympic and Paralympic Games. Paralympic Games. I'm oh, sorry, Paralympic Games specifically, my mistake. Um, uh, is named after a Brazilian music musician called Tom Hobim. Um, and he, he's made up as a representation of a Brazilian bear made <laughs> uh, of a whole host of um, plants from plants Brazilian, from Brazilian forest. forests. And that is, it's an official from the Paralympic village and you can so if there. it's officially a bear I, my mistake <laughs> um for anybody else watching it's got a blue body orange hands green leaves on top of its head and green feet thank you yeah. sorry so you know unsurprisingly i didn't recognize it straight away uh -huh. so we race our clockwork toys i film them beforehand the west midlands chooses the competitor and more often than not they win we still haven't quite worked that one out but guys would you like my left-handed toy or my right-handed toy your turn this time let's go your right hand the left hand side of the screen the left hand side of the screen and it's always a very quick sprint will you do the um, audio description if i put it on solo we okay. shall so we've got new competitors this week so uh, yeah they're, they're actually little toy dogs i was gonna say are they sheep i was close it's got four <laughs> Yes, you you won't be able to see this, but they're two little clockwork toys. You might be able to see them better at the end. So I'm going to start it now. Over to you, Josh. So we have a yellow sheep on the left and a white sheep on the right. I don't really know who to commentate winning. I'm not entirely sure. Um, <laughs> uh, Do you want me to read them that? that was... Yes, that's a London oh, win yet again. Yeah. I yeah, there's believe. a yellow dog and a white know. dog. I'm going to replay this because I, I thought that was chaos. Essentially, what happens is these toys run around in circles and the one that looks like it was at the back ends up at the front. I can't say any more than that, but here's a few seconds of it again. So we're left. Oh, this, I, I was expecting more of a kind of 100 metre dash and I think oh, it was more of a velodrome yeah. event. But, oh, um, yeah. There we go. I mean, the yellow, the yellow, the yellow dog had some greater stamina, but I don't think covered the distance. Yeah, I think basically we won, didn't we? You okay. did. I think so. Well, that so. kind of works. <laughs> I like there's, that. There's, there's definitely some cheating going on there. There's film manipulation and all yeah. sorts yeah. happening there. I know there must be, wasn't there? But you know, you would think on the old steer viewer that we would have won half of them, but no, because they've managed to work out without ever visiting kind of the lumps, the bumps, the kind of the odds and everything else. But that is what makes you world beaters. What can I yeah, say? The noises you hear in the middle of the night. That's that's us testing <laughs> measuring the course. <laughs> well, I can measure I'm better. We've lost about five in a row. Three, three. So um, what I want three, is yeah. they are counting. They, they do, they count, do yeah. count. You know that people thought we were just doing these clockwork Paralympics as a joke, but actually it really does matter. I feel like what's it? You know when you're doing the thing on ice. Help me, somebody. Dancing on ice. Oh, push. You know, pushing the stone Curling. across the ice. Curling. Curling. Yeah, exactly. I, when I set up the track, 
I take all the rugs up, I move everything and I get the hoover and it's like brushing the curling thing to kind of make every single piece of grit come out and still complete anarchy. But fortunately at this point, Josh, I'm going to hand over to you for some sport and gaming. Uh, yeah, so sport first. Um, in in the Newham history, uh, today was the closing ceremony of the London Paralympics. Um, in 2012, it was the 9th of September, uh, so that was eight years ago today, and then a year ago today, also in Newham, was the start of the uh, Para Swimming World Championships um, last year, which we were both lucky enough uh, to go to. So yeah, they kind of both clashed on uh, on, on today, and uh, that's around the wonderful. corner from your house, I think. <laughs> Yeah, just up the road. I can't believe what's happened in the last eight years, not to mention the last six months. So is there anything else? I know they've been replaying some of the ceremonies. Is there a replay of anything else coming up or has that all finished now? I Channel 4 are doing or have done. Because <laughs> I kind of, I briefly saw the advert for it whilst I was watching the Formula 1. Um, a kind of countdown of kind of the best moments from the last eight years um so kind of london and rio highlights um i can't remember when the advert said it was i remember watching it on sunday and i can't remember when it said it was um so i will double check that for uh the highlights yeah i mean and page I, after the show i mean and and we have mentioned it before so i'm, I'm hoping it's on the links page um but the ipc um, have their own channel and they are putting out like reams and reams of kind of specials and yeah, um, kind of replays. Uh, re replays of you know great matches great finishes all all kind of stuff that they are picking their own highlights from um certainly the last two paralympics anyway i've i've yet to see my swim from 1988 <laughs> but there you go <laughs> there you go well could you send me over the link and we will pop that straight up on the highlights and links okay. page again but you can search back through previous programs on that page because everything is listed under the date that it was broadcast so what else is happening what's happening today as opposed to the anniversaries yes so um well, right. it's not today, but it's a, it's a future event. Um, it's due to start in January. Um, but there is something called Extreme E, um, which is a new uh, racing series. Um, and then Lewis Hamilton announced mm -hmm. um, yesterday, I think, yeah. um, on Monday, that he's <laughs> created... Julie knows what I'm talking about. Um, he's very... created a team yeah. called X44. Um, and he's been doing a lot recently around kind of trying to offset the carbon footprint that he's motor racing career has um around kind of promoting electric cars and kind of doing lots of things himself to try and support that and so he's now kind of supporting this um series um, and i was reading a little bit about it having not heard anything um up until that point um and it's kind of going to five or six places around the world and um, they're making kind of documentaries at each location around some of the environmental challenges that those places face um, which is kind of quite interesting, but in, in the sports side of it, um, it's kind of electric off-road SUV vehicles. Um, each team has one male and one female driver, um, which is kind of new for, for motorsport. That, that's new. Um, I know some of the drivers that have already signed up, they haven't really kind of done team driver announcements, but people have kind of signed up to be like, I want to race in this. Um, Jamie Chadwick signed up, who won the W Series, um, which is kind of the Women's uh, Formula 3 Championship. Um, and then Billy Munger as well, who's the young British driver that lost both of his legs in a crash a few years ago. Um, so he signed up to race in it as well. Um, and yeah, it's kind of shaping up to be something that could be really exciting. I think it's kind of 23rd of January. I think it's due to be the first race um, of next year. So sounds interesting it does i mean i think it's 
just my naughty brain because all I could think about was my off-road mobility scooter, which does a grand eight miles an hour, but looks like a Harley Davidson. And just had a brief moment of drifting off towards the Olympic Park where we'd all got our power wheelchairs and our scooters and so on, our personal electric vehicles. But with that eight mile an hour limiter being slightly slower, but, yeah. um, but I still do a lot of fun in the future. Yeah, I, I I imagine they're going to be going slightly faster. Um, I'd say it'd be more high <laughs> octane, but um, it won't. <laughs> um, <laughs> by design. High um, yeah, onto uh, onto gaming as well. Um, so I saw last week the IPC announced um, that next year is going to be the first ever official Paralympics video game. Uh, which is something I've always wanted to play uh, and they kind of never made and I've always thought they should do. Um, and it's going to be called the Dream, the Pegasus Dream Tour, I think is what it, it said on the, the post. Um, and yeah, I there's kind of no real information about it yet other than it's going to come out. <laughs> there's no kind of uh, trailer or anything of, of gameplay, but I think it's something I'm going to be buying. I think it's kind of cool. I'm really looking forward. Uh, yeah, to it. I, I'm just so excited to find out whether you can like choose to have one arm or like yeah, yeah, kind of or... the create your character. You normally have to pick <laughs> your hair and your tattoos. It's like <laughs> yeah. pick, pick which <laughs> thing you're mixing or like <laughs> where's your spinal break and you kind of create your character. I oh, yeah. know. Unfortunately, as disabled people, we've all got quite a kind of dark sense of humour and will embrace <laughs> that with um, some gusto. But it does sound like a good idea. Some weeks ago, we challenged each other to be able to find some free computer games and play each other at some Olympic sports like shooting. I don't think we've ever managed to find that. Was it more difficult than you expected? Because I know that was something Robin had said a few weeks ago, that actually you think some, some games you assume are out there and just aren't. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, and certainly on the free ones, I mean, like we we did we did find a, a, a few, but they were, um, they're, they're fine if you've got 10 minutes to wait in the doctor's surgery or perhaps you don't want to go there. But, you know, that, that sort of moment of... Uh, of, you know, where you're sitting on the loo in the, yeah. your house that's nice and safe you don't have to go out and see anyone um, but not sufficient to trash us so um, that's still a work in progress <laughs> I think what else is happening in the gaming world I know last week was this day when I think last Thursday masses and masses of books were released because a lot of them the publication had been held up and they couldn't hold it up any longer is there a time when games are all published and is that in the autumn or is it a different time of the year um, yes, you kind of get lots of games coming out kind of now and kind of into November, kind of end of the year, and basically to coincide with Christmas because um, they can make loads of money from it. Uh, so there, there's a couple of games that came out last week, um, one of which I played the demo for, which is Marvel's Avengers, um, where you play... Um, as the Avengers from, from the Marvel uh, comic books and, and films and things. Um, but the game I've been playing quite a lot of um, is the, they have remastered uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2. Um, and that came out on Friday. Uh, which... well, I saw the news coverage of that. And as a 58-year-old gaming novice, it meant absolutely nothing to me. What is it? Um, so the original games came out i can't even remember a while ago a while ago um and there were skateboarding games um and there was kind of the there's tony hawk and Rodney mullen and lots of kind of you know who at the time were the biggest skateboarders in the world um and they were great and kind of you know universally adored so they've remastered them and kind of brought those back out and now they look fantastic and it looks like it was made in 2020 um, and they've kind of updated it with some younger, kind of more current uh, skateboarders. But what I really like, um, and I think it's a really wonderful touch, they have all of the original characters in it, um, but it's how old they are now. So it's not a 20-year-old Tony Hawk. It's a, you know, 48-year-old Tony Hawk. I can't remember how old he is. Um, and I just think it's really funny that all of the original characters, they've redone it. 
but yeah, they've uh, they've remodeled them based on what they look like now. And so it's a bit like a pre runner to the Paralympic thing. <laughs> so it's like they do an ex, they do like some real trick, and then they're going, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they haven't programmed in all of the hip injuries, um, <laughs> but it it is quite funny that they've kind of yeah, rather than just taking the original ones, they've kind of put that little detail in to kind of age them up and i just think that's really funny um, i think every time i hear you do the gaming spot i get more and more keen to sort of find out who are these creatives what are the careers you know what happens in the storytelling meetings and things it's relatively easy if you're an aspiring artist and writer to find career information and to understand, for example, you know, if you have a team of writers on a TV show, how does a writing team work? How is that different to an individual writer and so on? But that whole world of games that we talk about, you know, the drama, the design, the artwork, you know, the storytelling, all of these creative roles, it's much more difficult. So I'm going to ask you for next week to maybe just start doing some research maybe we can interview somebody it would probably have to be a recorded interview because of time differences because my guess is that a lot of people are over in the states but not all of them it's definitely you know a growing career isn't it we have a is it the pan no we have the something or other academy at newham college but i can't actually remember which tech company supports it and probably shouldn't promote them on air anyway but i think it's an increasing kind of area for young people to go into as artists and probably one of the best paid areas that you can go into but um yes let's not talk about how little artists earn because i don't think that would really encourage anybody i was seeing i saw something earlier in the week about dancers and dancers have been particularly badly hit by the lockdown and so on because on average they only earn five thousand a year from performance anyway and what they usually do is supplement that with things like teaching and most of those classes have been suspended and their performance opportunities have been suspended. So if you're a dancer in the UK at the moment on the usual kind of per job contract, you know, there is almost no work at all, which must be really, really tough. And I think that's, but, I mean, it's the same for musicians, really, you know, unless you happen to be already a named artist and you can be, you know, running you know online events but you know the kind of all those bands that uh, would have been you know rehearsing practice trying to break through um even if they are currently able to practice you know you 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 can't hone your craft in a bedroom you have to be out there and performing to an audience even if it's only an audience of one maybe but it it, it does need you need to have that practice and that's just not happening so they talk about you know, we have a generation of lost graduates. Well, we're losing. It's not, you know, it's, it's the focus is so much broader than just graduates. It is artists and it is gardeners and it is, create. you know, a whole host of creatives that are also missing out. Well, absolutely. And I think the performing arts, of course, have been far more badly hit than anybody else. If you're an individual visual artist, you can pretty much get to your studio and get on with it. You might have to delay your exhibitions and you certainly might not be able to teach. But even then, the most common second job for artists is teaching at a college and the colleges have all gone back. So, yes, I mean, one of my assistants is a musician and they were able finally to find a socially distanced rehearsal venue. But it was the first time they could even rehearse in six months when they can actually go back on tour is a whole different issue. But it's coming to the end of our hour with you today. We're going to be back on Friday as always. And coming up on Friday, we've always got two particular features which we would love you con to contribute to. Dressing up to go out to stay in. We dress up to go out, but we're actually staying in. But just because you're staying in, why just stick to shorts and tracky bottoms? Why not dress up to do something really fabulous? It could be entirely imaginary, like traveling the world and going to the bottom of the sea. But it's OK because we're staying in anyway and only going out in our imagination. We also have our section Something for the Weekend, where we recommend things that you can do from home, online and offline. If you have something coming up, if you're streaming, you've got an online exhibition, you've put a poem on your website, 
let us know about it. We would love to tell other people about it too. Do you have anything to add or shall I just come to you for final words? Do you have any final words, Judy? Yes, I do. Um, thank everybody. Uh, I want to thank everybody who took part in the poetry this morning um, and to continue to produce those lovely poems is an absolute joy to share. I think it's 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 wonderful. So thank you for that. I look forward to next Wednesday. Yes, and I'd like to add actually thank you to the poets because I think it really encourages everybody when we're able to share poems. And I think they've been very generous that, you know, these are poems that have been written very quickly and on a subject that they haven't even chosen for themselves. So thank you all of the poets who are contributing and Thank you from me for watching. So over to the West Midlands for some final words. Yeah, no, just have a great couple of days. Enjoy what sunshine there is and we'll see you Friday. Goodbye.